not sure. I know what we did in um, sixth grade math or, or fifth grade math last year. I don't know what you all say, what you all did. And I'm not sure if you got to the region where you had to find the surface area. So I'm going to teach it as if it is new to you. But with your um, expert uh, definition, all right, we now know that surface area just means it's the area of all the surfaces, all right? Now, in this case, there is different shapes, all right? But it's going to come down to one formula, all right, that we're going to be using. Now, again, I'm not going to do the formula base because generally what happens is when you take the RBs, you might forget what the formula is, all right? So I have to break it down to you, and I have to show you exactly how to find the surface area if for whatever reason you forget the formula, all right? So the first thing I want to do is I want to describe the... Um, area of the surfaces as a net, all right? Now, we kind of did this on the IXL where you just take the shape and you break it down into its individual shapes, all right? So what we're going to do is on question number one, all right, I'm going to kind of draw the net. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to try to show you how to draw the net a little bit better. Maybe you already know how, and it's okay. The point is, I like to see first the visual. All right, I want you to see exactly what the surface area is. All right, then that can kind of help you remember the what? That can kind of help you remember the formula. All right, now because it's a prism, all right, I know most people have taken a cardboard box and they've cut it up and they've opened it and laid it out. That's kind of what it is. All right, but let me show you exactly what I mean. And this is kind of what I want to do. So on your paper, what you're going to do is we're going to draw the net for one and two, and then we're not going to draw the net anymore after that. All right, I want you to be able to see one and two, and then everything else we're just going to use a what? We're going to use a formula, but you got to listen. All right, so number one here, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to draw, all right, and you don't have to. Um, you can draw an estimation if you want. I just have the ability uh, to kind of draw it. All right, so what I want you to do is, um, you'll see what I mean here, copy. All right, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to paste. Now, again, the first thing I want you to recognize is what are uh, the dimensions of that rectangle. That rectangle is what? Six feet by 12 feet. So I want everybody to put six feet here, and then there would be 12 feet here. All right, now what I want to do is... Does everybody see the side wall? Yeah. All right. In other words, I'm now talking about this guy right here. Does everybody see what I'm getting at? All right. So I slice it down. All right. Now I'm opening it up. All right. When I open it up, all right, that is going to, and I'm going to make a different color. Now, how wide is it? Two feet. Two feet. So would you say it's a little bit smaller, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's supposed to be a little bit smaller, even though it doesn't look that way. So now I'm drawing it down here like this, and I'm drawing it over like this. And then you're supposed to visually see how that's two feet. And this is still what? 12 feet. Everybody see that? Just hold on and just listen. All right? Everybody see that? That's the front wall, and now the side wall. And now I'm going to draw the what? The back wall. And the back wall is the same as the what? The back is the same as the front. So now I'm just going to connect it here because I can. All right. And now that's how much. This dimension would be 6 feet, and this is still 12. Is everybody okay with that? All right. Now, again, just to show you, it's this wall we started with. Then we did the side wall. Now we just did the what? The back wall. And now I'm going to have to do the left wall. And the wet left wall has a dimension that's exactly the same as the what? The one on the right side or the side. There's front and the back, which are the same. The left and right are the same. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to draw something that is 
just like it. So we'll go two feet. I'll try to draw it down here. All right. And it's not the best, but it'll work. All right. So now this is two feet. And this again is what? 12 feet. So you're supposed to recognize that is the net. All right. Now I need the top. All right. The top of the box. All right. Which is going to be this correct. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure that this way. And I'm going to measure it this way. Now what a lot of kids had a trouble with is understanding that this width right here I knew was two feet. I knew it was two feet because it was connecting to what? To this part. All right. If you were to wrap it around, that two feet is supposed to do what? Line up. And then I'm trying to get you to see that this wall right here would be in the back of that wall. And then this wall right here, if it was wrapped all the way around, would wrap to there. So I grew that. All right. And then same thing on the bottom. Right. So you're going to draw this little top part. And that now is referred to as the net. All right. That's referred to as the net. All right. Now, why is that called the net? Because that's just the box broken down into the individual size. Now, what's the matter? That's all it is. All right. Nothing fancy. All right. That's how you would draw a net. All right. What? No, because there's only a top and a bottom. There's not three bottoms. No, I know. I don't care where you put it. All right. But it has to be below, right? All right. It's going to wrap around. That's it. It's not a big deal. All right. Now what I want to do is to calculate the surface area, we're now going to calculate the area of all the what? Rectangles. We're just going to add them up. All right. So if I ask you about the top rectangle right here, all right, what would that area be there? Who said it? 12. Yes. Thank you. That's going to be 12 square feet. I'm going to circle it because I don't want the numbers, right? I don't want you to mistake the numbers. All right, the rectangle right below that has an area of what? 40. The one right below that? 72. 72, right? So it's say 72 square feet. I'm circling that. And then the one on the bottom would be the same as the one on the what? Top. So that has to be what? 12 square feet. All right. Now, the next one to the right would be what? 24 square feet. And then the one right next to that again would be 72 square feet. And the one right next to that would be what? 24 square feet. <clears throat> so now, how do I find the total surface area? All I would have to do is what? You add them up. All right, so everybody add them up for me real quick. And what did it come out to be? 216. Somebody said 216. 216. 216, does everybody agree? Oh. All right, so with a surface area would be 216 square feet. All right, would be 216 square feet. Is everybody okay with that? All right, now the next thing I want to do is I want to show you a formula. All right, I want to show you a formula. All right. And again, this is something that most kids at your age would it'd be hard to remember. Now, look, guys, I, I really don't mind, you know, but if you're distracting me, all right, with the food, it's no. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Now, the formula we're going to talk about, all right. If I was at looking at this shape right here, how many bases are there in this figure? Always in a prism. There's always what? Two bases. And are the bases the same in this prism? Yes. So what I want you to do now is I want you to write this formula down. Surface area is equal to 2 B, which just means 2 times the area of the base. Now, I'm going to write plus 
capital P. What does capital P stand for? Perimeter. Perimeter times capital H. And the height stands, or H obviously stands for the height of the prism. Now I'm going to show you how you came up with that formula, so please pay attention. Look and see. Look up here. All right. What I want to do now is this was how much from here to here? Six. Let me write it a little darker. Right? So everybody can see. From here to here was how much? How much from here to here? Two. Two. And then what? Six. And then what? Two. And then this twelve. is 12. So I want everybody to see that's just one giant rectangle. Does everybody, no, just stop talking and listen. All right? That is just one giant rectangle. Does everybody agree with that? Now, this 12 feet represents the height, which is this, correct? Now, if I said to you, now watch, I'm going to make it a little bit darker, a little bit thicker so we can see. This, from here to here, plus that, plus that, plus that. Does everybody agree that's just the length of the rectangle? Well, if that's the length of the rectangle, watch. All that was, was that, plus that, plus that, plus that. And what is that called? That's called the perimeter. All right, so when you unbox it, or not unbox it, when you cut it and lay it flat, it just makes one giant what? Rectangle. And the length here of that rectangle is the actual what? That part right there, is the actual perimeter of the what? That's the perimeter of the base. That's what you have to know. All right? So every time, just like last time, I'm going to say, now that you know the formula for volumes, we're going to keep going a little bit more. Now we got to remember surface area of a prism. And the formula for surface area of a prism is 2 times the area of the base plus the perimeter times the height. You got that. I want you to write that down. All right? Now, Someone tell me, again, let's see if we're correct. What is the area of the base? Somebody tell me what the area of the base is. 72. Well, in this case right here, I want you to think of this as like the base right here. Are you with me? Uh, yeah, so it's 12. Yes, 12. Plus, now I need the perimeter of the base. What would be the perimeter of the base? I need someone to calculate the perimeter of the base for me. What is it? Uh, 16. 16. Is everybody okay with that being 16? The perimeter of the base is 16. Mm -hmm. Times, what's the height of the prism? 12. So now I want everybody to do on their calculator 2 times 12 plus 16 times 12. And what is that? Everybody should be doing that. You should be writing that down. All right. Bless you, bless you. Mm -hmm. So the surface area, come on now. Everybody's got to do it on your calculator. 2 times 12 plus 16 times 12 again is what? 216. And again, it would be feet squared. And what you're supposed to realize is those two answers are what? The exactly the same. So if you get confused, you can always just do the area of all of the surfaces and add them up. I don't prefer that, right? Because now you should see what I'm doing, all right? And that formula will help make the process quicker. Personally, after I drew it out and realized what I was doing, then I didn't have to write it out anymore. I could just understand exactly how we're finding the surface area. What? Oh, how do you get 12 for the area of the base? It's not the area of the base. Well, okay. The area of the base, this is the base right here, correct? Mm -hmm. So what are those dimensions? Um, so yes. Um, I have perimeters, but what if you add all the sides together? You add the perimeter of the base, that's what I said. The perimeter of the base. This is what we're adding up. The perimeter of the base. I'm not adding up. Look, I'm not adding up that, 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 that. No, I know. I just thought like... The perimeter of the base. This is what we're adding up. The distance around the base. That's all we're doing. James, what? I added the perimeter. So it isn't the perimeter... Isn't this right here? Just to make sure I'm correct. Isn't this 6? 
this two, this is six, and this is two. If I add that up, do we agree? What? Can you like change what the base is since it's like a rectangular prism? Would you get it if I can see it? Of course not. Okay. Just because you turn it around, it'll be the same. All right, and I could show you to you, but I, I don't want to. I don't want to waste time. I have no idea what you just said. Speak up. The perimeter of the base. What does perimeter mean? Right, you're adding two plus six plus two plus six. We can all do that. That's the perimeter. Now, just to make sure I'm correct. We're going to do the same thing with the triangular prism. All right. You're going to draw the net for the triangular prism. All right. Now, just write right down the page. All right. Lucky for me, I can just slide this over. All right. Now, I'm going to draw the net of the triangular prism. Remember, I said we're only going to draw the net for one and two. We're not drawing the net for number three because after I explain number two, you'll understand the formula better, and hopefully you feel like, wow, bless you. I'd much rather just use the formula. That's what I'm hoping. All right? But I want you to understand where I'm getting 2 times the base plus the perimeter times the height from. So here we go. Ready? All right. First, the base is a what, guys? The base is a triangle. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to try to draw the triangle. All right, so there's your triangle. Everybody good with that? Now, this is kind of like you'd say like a tent, hopefully, right? And now the triangle, I have the piece or the rectangle that's on the bottom. Does everybody agree with that? All right, so I'm going to draw the bottom piece, which would be something like right here. Is everybody comfortable with that? Everybody see that? I forgot to put the dimensions. So, what are the dimensions of the triangle? Say it. Five by, what is the one on the bottom? Six, and this is a five. The four has nothing to do with it. All right, the four is just the height of the triangle. All right, the four is just the height of the triangle. And we need that because eventually we're gonna have to find the area, so we had to know what the height was. All right? So now what I'm going to do is on the bottom, I'm going to draw the other triangle, right? And you should be able to kind of see that. And do those numbers stay the same? So this is a 5, this is a 5, and this is a 6. All right. Now I need help. What is this length from here to here? That's 11. Thank you very much. That's 11. All right. Now, I'm going to draw this rectangle right here. That's, what are those dimensions? 5 by 11, right? So now, I want you to draw this. should be a little bit shorter, do you agree? Going down here, and then over here. And then what I want you to realize, if I put a 5 there, what am I, what's happening with these two sides? What do they do to each other? They connect to each other. That's exactly right. If I were to fold that up, those two fives would fit perfectly together. What? Before you just added that rectangle, why, how did you know it was five by eleven? I looked at it. This oh, yeah. is what? And this is, just like on the other side, it's going to be five by what? Five by eleven. All right. So now. I'm actually just going to put it on the other side, All right? I'm just going to go over this way. Again, it's a little bit shorter. Going down this way. Extend this out a little bit. All right. And again, this five is supposed to match up with that five. All right, and if you fold that up now, you should be able to kind of visualize that triangular prism. That's what I'm hoping. All right. Now, let's go ahead and measure, all right, 
because this is 11, this is 11, 11, and 11. Okay, so what's the rectangle on the far left? What's that area going to be? 55, right? Let's just circle it. What's the rectangle in the middle going to be? 66. What's the rectangle on the right? All right, guys, now you got to be careful. What's the area of the triangle going to be? What's the area of the triangle? 12. Area of a triangle is what again, Lucas? Yeah, one half base times height, right? What's the height? And what's the base? Half of four times six is what? So this guy right here is what? 12. Then the one on the top is also what? And notice I like to circle them so I don't mess it up. All right. Now, to find the surface area, what do I do to those numbers? Add them up. What? I'm confused today about the area of the triangle. One half base times height. Where is the base and the height? Shh. Oh, six times. Right? Why? Why? Uh, Come on. You with me? Right? Again, I always try to remind kids that points to the base and the height. You with me? So that's why I do um, the both 12s. Okay, so now add that up. What? Is that right? Did anybody else get 200? Yes. 200 square yards. Service area is 200 square yards. All right? Now, um, before, I, I forgot something here, guys, because I always want to constantly review with you these formulas. I want everybody to put underneath that volume. What's the formula for volume? What is it? Capital B, capital H. So what's the area of the base? What was the area of the base? I'm doing number one. Stop talking. You're not listening. All right? Messing around there. Now you don't hear me. Go. What's the area of the base? It was 12. And then what was the height of the prism? 12. All right. So now the volume of that prism was what again? Or what would it be? How much? Yeah, we would say 144 what? Cubic feet. 144 cubic feet. Everybody happy with that? What? That's the one on the left. All right, number two. All right, now what I want to do is I want to find the surface area of question number two. All right, we're going to use the formula. What is the formula again? Two times the base plus perimeter times the height. Surface area. I'm trying to show you it's the same thing. I'm trying to show you this the same thing. What? Well, look at the formula on the last problem. What's the formula from the last thing? It's the same. Always the same. All right? So what's the area of the base, kiddos? 12 plus what is the perimeter of the base? Come on. What's the perimeter of the base? Well, it's all right. What is it? That was quick. 16. All right. Times what's the height of the prism? Someone. I don't care. 11. That is correct. All right. So now everybody do on their calculator 2 times 12 plus 16 times 11. And it should be what? But don't take my word for it. So 200. And then we would say yards squared. So again, what am I trying to show you? I'm trying to show you it doesn't matter how you set it up. If you forget when you're taking your ERBs, if you forget how to do surface area, you know it's just look at the shape, add up all the shapes area, and that will be the surface area. All right, that's all they're trying to tell you. All right, now quickly, we're going to review volume. Volume again is what? BH. So volume is, what's the area of the base? 12. What's the height? 11. So that volume would be 
hundred and when did you divide by two? Twelve yeah. times eleven. Oh, one hundred twenty-two. Wait, one hundred thirty-two. One hundred thirty-two. One hundred thirty-two. I'm just asking a question here for a second for some of you guys who are confused. I said, what is the area of the base? I didn't say what's the formula for the area of the base. We've already calculated the area of the base a bunch of times. So the base is a what? What's the base shape? Triangle. All right, is a triangle. To calculate the area of the triangle, we would do one half base times height. What is one half times six times four? Twelve. We've already calculated it like five times. That's what I'm telling you. The area of the base. You with me? Mm -hmm. The area of the base is what? Twelve. Twelve. We already calculated that. That's what capital B stands for. If you didn't know the area of the base, you would have to start over and say one half times six times four. Oh. And then, and then the height is what? Eleven. Eleven. So the formula, or I'm sorry, the volume would not be squared. It would be what? Cubed. It would be cubed. All right? Is everybody with me on that? Any questions or concerns? What? I don't know what you mean. I only do 12 with two numbers. What are you asking? I thought the volume was like triangle. The formula for volume is area of the base times the height. You with me? The base is a what? Oh, we calculated the area of the base and multiplied it by the height. Beautiful. All right? That's what we did there. All right? Now, um, again, what I want to do now is I'm just going to shrink this down a little bit. All right. Now, we're not drawing number three out. All right? We're not drawing three out. All right? I think hopefully you understand what I'm saying. All right, so we're going to use the formula. All right, so I want the formula for surface area. Surface area. Again, surface area is what? Two times the base. Two times the area of the base plus the perimeter of the base times the height. Now, does it really matter what I choose for the base on this rectangular prism? Some of my kids in one class, they wanted to do this right here. Okay? Some people, I, I think because it's a rectangular prism, to me, the easiest thing to do would be to call this what? This is the base. All right? That's the base. All right? Does it matter how you do it? It's going to be the same answer because you're calculating simply the area of all the sides. Do I agree with that? All right, so let's see if we can agree with this. All right, I want to use this. Listen to me. I want to use this as the base. I want to use this as the base. All right? So I have surface area equals 2. What would be the area of the base? 84, thank you very much. Plus, now I need help with the perimeter of the base. The perimeter of the base. Tell me. Tell him. Eric, perimeter of the base. Forty, of course, it's forty. All right, fourteen plus six plus fourteen plus six, or you can just say fourteen plus six is what? Twenty times two, because there's always two. You with me? All right. So now the perimeter is again twenty, right? Times what's the height again? The height of the prism is twelve. So here we go. Surface area is equal to. Calculate that, please. 
648. Somebody said 648. Do we believe her? Yes. No, we're going to double check her for sure. 648 what? Inches squared. Inches squared. Is everybody happy with that explanation? What? Same answer. All right. Now, volume, real quick. Volume is going to be what? What's the area of the base? Area is we. Oh, I we, did a different shape. Okay. So let's do area of the base, which was what? Still. We already, I know, the area of the base is still what? 84. That's what I'm trying to show you guys. If, if you don't change it, if you already say the area of the base is 84, when you do the volume, you already have the area of the base. Or you don't have to recalculate is what I'm trying to say. And then what's the height again? 12. So yes, I'm sure you were right. The volume is what? 1008 what? Yes, inches cubed. 1008 inches cubed. What? That's why I keep telling you, man, you, you're, I, I, it would be easy, but I just feel like you're being distracted. I don't, I'm not sure if I'm right, right? But you should be able to tell me, I already said to you, this, I want to be the base. I want that shape to be the base. Do you understand me or not? Right? And we said over here already, does it really matter which one is the base though? No, it will come to be the same. Quickly. Oh, so that's the perimeter for the surface area. Mm -hmm. 40. Or 40. Oh, yes, I did do 20. Thank you. Did you guys tell me it was 648 anyway, though, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that should be 40, but you guys just did it with 40, right? I just, I I just I inadvertently put 20, right? So do that at 480. That's right. You guys, 648 is correct. Yeah, yeah. I just inadvertently put 20 there. So go ahead. 2 times 84 plus 40 times 12. Isn't that 648? Is that 648, correct? Right? Okay, guys, listen. And I want to tell you something. Part of the reason I'm a little fussy is because I'm, I, I need you to listen. I need you to concentrate or I'm going to leave you in the dust and you're going to be upset because you don't know. All right. I'm trying to teach you like a little advanced way to do it. Like my geometry kids don't know this yet. All right. We're, we're doing that in next chapter, believe it or not. All right. So again, this is not easy, but you have to pay attention. You got to, you got to be with me the whole time. All right, you have to understand what the letters mean. All right, if you don't remember what the letters mean, you got to write them down. All right, that's your responsibility. All right, you got to listen. It's not easy. It's getting harder. All right, every day, a little bit. All right, so here's your homework. I'm giving you a break. All right, all you have to do is number four. Now, on number four, all you have to do, though, is I need you to draw the net by yourself. Is everybody with me? You have to draw the net, then you have to do the surface area like we did, one and two, then you have to use the formula to double check your net, make sure, put your hand down and just listen. Draw the net, calculate the surface area, then use the surface area formula and double check your work. You hear me? Then I want you to find the volume. We're going to practice doing the volume continuously. All right? So again, all you have to do is number four. Then tomorrow in class, we're just going to what? Keep right on going, but we're not going to draw the nets anymore. We're going to practice using the formula. All right, now tomorrow we have some new shapes because we have cylinders. All right, we have all kinds of different shapes that is the same formula. All right, you just have to know the formula for area of a circle. All right, it's very simple. Quick. I already said, yes, ma'am. Number four, I'll say it one more time. Draw the net. That'll be the last net you have to do because I want to make sure you can do it by yourself. Calculate the surface area using a what? Net. 
Then calculate the surface area using the formula. They should be what? The same. the same. If they're the same, then you know how to do today's lesson. If they're different, we got to talk tomorrow. And then you find the volume. And we're always practicing volume. What? I summarized it beautifully. I don't understand why it's what is the perimeter? 14 plus 6 plus 14 plus 6. What? Today that's 40. Oh. In your mind, I'm not sure what it is, but we're going to go with 40. Because if I add those four numbers together with a calculator, still what? 40. Yeah, 80. That's the problem. That's the problem. I'm asking you to add. Sorry. All right. We'll learn that next year.